Welcome to this edition of the First Aid Show. Uh, we're up here in Birmingham in the NEC. We had one of our instructor updates. So what we're doing is have a little chat with Martin here, Martin Barry. He runs a first aid training company, and we're going to have a little chat about how first aid training can kick in very easily. So what we're looking within first aid is to pre-program someone that if an emergency happens, then they're going to be ready to deal with it. So that any of you watching, if you are, have got basic first aid training, then you'll find that the training you have is applied and it is programmed into your head when you need it. Hi there, Martin. Hi, Keith. Right. Can you tell just briefly a little bit about yourself, your first aid instructor? Yeah, yeah been a first aid instructor oh, for probably about three years now. Uh, thoroughly enjoy it, fantastic job. Uh, you get to speak to all sorts of people and give, the, give them the skill for life. And we're all involved in programming people. I know mm. you did your course, we're programming people this, this side. And really we're looking at, we've discussed earlier on, I know about this, this uh, a particular instance where you've trained somebody and this person maybe has got the real confidence to deal with a serious emergency con condition. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, did a company training, there was eight people on there. It was the three day first aid at work. Lady didn't really stand out during the three days. She was mid fifties, uh, passed the course, took away the knowledge. Got a lovely testimonial two weeks after where she said that she'd been up to the Lake District in a holiday cottage with her elderly parents. On this particular occasion, she heard a, a crashing sound coming from the kitchen, walked in, found her dad on the floor, unresponsive, not breathing, obviously suffered a cardiac arrest. The Lake District, now the location I was in was fairly remote. What she states is that her training kicked in, she did the CPR, the rescue breaths, everything she'd been taught on the course. Uh, first aiders are taught this uh, and, and this is what we, we try to program them to so they don't actually have to think, no, it, it's second nature and this is what this lady says, the paramedics turned up, actually now her dad's still alive, now they managed to shock him with a defibrillator so her CPR was as effective enough now to give her dad the very best chance. Now, so fantastic letter, she's forever indebted as is her father. Mm -hmm. It's quite easy, I think, when you actually train somebody and you get these nets, it's nice to hear this feedback. Back. Absolutely. And also we're asking, I know you've done work, community first responder groups and things like this in the past and, and dealing with real CPR, because a lot of what we're doing is teaching the theory of CPR yeah. in the hope that no one ever has to use it. But when it does kick in, uh, and I know we talked another this little story, you said, can you just tell us a bit more about where you've actually had to do CPR for real and what it really felt like and, and what sort of emotions you went through during and also what you felt about afterwards. Yeah, again, it's all being conditioned. It's practicing uh, and being ready. Uh, expect the unexpected. On a particular occasion, turned up at quite a major supermarket, uh, spoke to the, the store first aider, who states that a gentleman leaving the store had suffered a, some form of seizure. He had dropped to the floor, convulsed. Uh, first aider had checked him over, stated his breathing wasn't particularly good. It was fairly noisy. And first aider turned him into the recovery position. Upon my arrival, looked at the, the gentleman concerned. He was purple from the neck up. Obvious no signs of respiration. Now again, gentleman had suffered a, a cardiac arrest. First aider had not recognized agonal breathing whatsoever. Uh, put him into the recovery position and walked away and left him. Now, so not even monitoring. So got straight on with the job. Now started CPR, uh, rescue breaths. Had my defibrillator with me after the second shock. Now we've got spontaneous outcome. Ambulance turned up, he was conveyed to hospital, straight into resource, and again, that gentleman lived. Now he's still around today, and I've actually met that gentleman since. Uh, again, fantastic feeling. I actually went into the store afterwards, now, because I had to collect the, the equipment I'd left. Now I spoke to the duty manager, gave him one of my business cards, and said, if you want to come and do some first aid training, by all means, I'm nice and local. And it was stated, well, all our first aiders only had their updates two weeks ago. They've only just requalified two weeks ago. So not all first aid training is to the standard that we'd like to with pro training. So we have to put real life experience and the quality of training that we deliver gives us more successful outcomes, I'd have thought. And just when you're actually physically doing CPR, a lot of people worry about how will they cope and I know it's a male thing, we don't like admitting it, it gets a bit upsetting, but when you've actually done CPR and maybe has or has not been successful, yeah. you know, it, what, is that upsetting? Is it, is it something that's hard to uh, take? 
Personally, I, I'm, I'm fairly detached. I uh, treat it very professionally. Now, I'll give you another quick instance. I was with my son, who was 16 at the time, uh, and we, we went to a, a, a cardiac arrest at his school. He was actually there at the time. Now, he was doing CPR on the member of staff. Uh, managed to, again, shock this gentleman, and we got him back on the first shock. Now, we followed the ambulance to the hospital. Uh, my son was still sitting in the car when I came out of resource. He'd gone a really funny sh shade of white. Uh, shock had kicked in. His, his practice CPR, and again, from talking to him af afterwards, now the reality of doing it on a real person compared to a mannequin, he said he detached. Now, it was the same, and it's the after effects. Now, did I do everything properly? On this occasion, it was a successful outcome. So people need to be prepared that they can only give the people the, that they're treating the best chance. Doesn't guarantee everything, but without the training, the, you're going to leave somebody with no chance whatsoever. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And just uh, finally, um, if you need training, uh, obviously we're biased in the set of company we've got, but first aid training is really, really important. You can always find a local instructor on www.procoursesco.uk or get in touch or you can email me direct at keith at and we'll come up the course local to you. Thank you very much.